TCU Athletics and U.S. Cellular present The Jeff Lebo Show. The Jeff Lebo Show is brought to you by U.S. Cellular, the official wireless provider of the ECU Pirates. And now in his 25th year, the voice of the Pirates, Jeff Charles. Thanks so much for tuning into the show today. It's great to be back and visit with you. Uh, we're pleased to report we're getting better and stronger every day. As most of you know, I was diagnosed with colon cancer. It's been now over two months ago, but the treatments have been terrific. And in fact, we're looking forward to getting back on the Pirate IMG Sports Network uh, with our flagship station, 1079 WNCT, and also with our work at Pirate Radio 1250 and 930 in the very near future. Words can never express how grateful we are to the great support that we've had from the Pirate Nation. I want to thank each and every one of you for your cards, your letters, emails, texts, tweets. We've had so much response from so many wonderful people out there, and I can assure you that I have read each and every one of them, and I appreciate each one, and it has really uplifted my spirits. I also want to take this opportunity to thank the doctors and nurses at Viden Health. We are so blessed here in Greenville to have great health care, and my care has been terrific, and we'll be forever grateful to those folks out there. For all of you in the Pirate Nation, I hope to see you soon. Keep painting them purple. Pirate fans, you're the best. Welcome into the Jeff Lebo Show, everyone. I'm Billy Weaver sitting in for Jeff Charles. Great to see Jeff Charles doing well up and about. And, of course, we hope to have him back on the show as soon as possible. Now, coming up on the show, the Pirates hit the road to take on the UCF Knights Saturday night in their only game of the week. We'll have highlights from Orlando, Florida. We'll take an inside look at the ECU women's program as head coach Heather Macy takes aim at the postseason. ECU football coach Ruffin McNeil unveiled his 2013 signing class earlier this week. We'll hear why Coach Ruff thinks this is his best group yet. Jeff Connors can't wait to get his hands on those recruits. The Pirates strength and conditioning coach will be along with another edition of Camp Connors. We'll have that and much more as Jeff Lebo joins me right after this. We'll be right back with more of the Jeff Lebo Show presented by U.S. Cellular and sponsored in part by bb and Sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. And buy Pizza Hut's $10 pizza. The Jeff Lebo Show continues with sponsorship by Suddenlink. Bundle and save with Suddenlink. Call 1-877-807-3806 today. And buy Coke Zero. Every sip of Coke Zero is like a game-winning shot for your taste buds. Welcome back into the show, everyone. Jeff Lebo joining us. And, Coach, a little weird deal for you this week. No midweek game for the last three or four weeks. You've had a Wednesday night game. Got a little time to prepare this week and get some guys healthy. Well, and also take a little bit of extra time off, Billy. I mean, we really need it. We've had a hard stretch of games playing twice uh, a week since uh, Christmas time, really, and uh, really need this to kind of shore up some areas, get a little bit healthy, and, and start the preparation stage for Central Florida. Talk about the week Maurice Kemp had named Conference USA Player of the Week. He had 33 points against Rice and had a great stat line in that game. Well, 33 points. He got to the free throw line, 13 of 16. Uh, from the free throw line, I think nine rebounds, six steals, and was terrific in the second half. We needed all of that with Robert being out. Talk about what the preparations were like going into the UCF game. You had a week off, and you knew you were going to play a very tough UCF team down there. Well, uh, you know, we got to prepare, obviously, for Clanton, who had 36 points in our first matchup here. Spurlock also had a big game with 23 points. And so our emphasis in, in our scouting report was how to defend Clanton, which is everybody's worry when you play Central Florida, and then also offensively shoring up some things. We really got to get some productivity from our two guard position. We got to shoot the ball well. Only one game this week for the Pirates in Conference USA, and that's a matchup against Central Florida. Let's take you out to Orlando, Florida for all the highlights. The Pirates hit the floor with plenty of energy. Maurice Kemp on the inbound alley oop. 19 19, our score. 24 points, 11 rebounds for the Pirates senior. UCF would drain nine first half three pointers, a 48 35 lead at the half. In the second half, nice to see Robert Sampson back on the floor. He hits the three ball to cut the lead to seven with eight minutes to play. Now down eight with three to go, Miguel Paul drives. One of his 10 assists up top to Sampson with the big finish. It's a six point contest. 
A minute 30 to go. Akeem Richmond from the corner. He drills the triple. The Pirates down only four, 77, 73, but they would get no closer. This play pretty much summed up the night. Isaiah Sykes is going to go coast to coast. He would miss twice before finally getting the basket. He finishes with 20 points, 16 rebounds, 11 assists for the triple-double. The Knights hit their free throws and pull away for the win. 83-73 the final. The Pirates fall to 13-9, 4-5 in conference play. The final stats from this week's game are brought to you by your Carolina Chevy dealers. We want to take this time to congratulate Baltimore Ravens fullback Vontae Leach. The former Pirate helped the Baltimore Ravens defeat the San Francisco 49ers in Super Bowl 47 last week. Leach caught three passes for 10 yards and threw a key block on Jacoby Jones' record kickoff return in the third quarter as the Ravens held off the 49ers 34-31. Leach celebrated with teammates and made confetti angels as he kept ECU's Super Bowl streak alive, joining C.J. Wilson, who won a title with the Packers two seasons ago, and Linville Joseph, who captured a ring with the Giants last season. Vontae Leach, the newest ECU Super Bowl champion. It starts with you guys. Make sure we are pointing and talking first four steps. Let's go. Huddle it up. Huddle it up. Hey, C. C. Hey, let's go, man. Welcome back into the show, everyone. The ECU Lady Pirates improved to 16 and five with a big win on the road at Houston on Thursday night. Now, Heather Macy in her third season as ECU head basketball coach has proven to be one of the best in the business and one of the most vocal. Take a look. All right, guys, just a couple things, couple of reminders. The keys are gonna be transition defense, transition defense, and rebounding the basketball. We the, the biggest thing for us is the preparation that leads up to a game day. It's really not that moment that when we're in the locker room, it's more the two days of prep as we're preparing on what it's going to take to be successful in this upcoming game. AJ, you got to set hard screens, shuffle cuts. Remember to make the read off the shuffle. Now I want you to play with incredible energy, and we must create our own from the opening tip. This night is what you've been training and what you've been preparing for. My total commitment and my total driving force are these kids on this basketball team. And when we recruit them, you know, we get them to buy into the vision of what we are trying to do, but we also buy into them. The kids that I coach know that I believe in them so much, and I think that they go out there and they play that hard because of it. Let's go get it, let's go get it. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Are we ready? Are we ready? Uh, we're ready, we're ready, okay. Then what drives me throughout the game is getting to see those players succeed. Uh, that's the greatest, I think, uh, victory for a coach. It starts with you guys. Make sure we are pointing and talking first four steps. Let's go. Huddle it up. Huddle it up. Hey, C. C. Hey, let's go, Mad Man. Mad Man. Right there. Right there. All day, baby. All day. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. We always talk about the next play. And so we try to play in four-minute segments. And so when they come over and we've had a really nice four-minute media, then we talk about now we got to play the next four minutes. I love the way you started. Now let's do that another four minutes now. That really breaks it up for them. So if it was not a very good four minutes, let's let that go and move on to the next one. Hey, let's push the wedge. Push the wedge. Christine, we're pushing the wedge. Push the wedge. I coach my team. And obviously I'm not happy with all the calls that are made. No foul on that entry pass. But I think when the kids see me lose my composure and I'm constantly complaining about calls, then they will follow my lead. So I attempt to do that in more of conversational with the officials versus berating them. I'm not going to ask for it every time, but the two that I saw, I thought were legitimate fouls. I'm not going to be on you all the time about it. Travel! Travel! I hope that they're playing with between the lines and keeping total focus. We talk a lot about you know, your, your, your brain follows your eyes. Your eyes follow your brain. And so where, the, where your eyes go, that's where your mind's going to go. So we want to stay within the lines. Come on, AJ. Yeah. I do think the greatest thing about women's college basketball is the fan experience. So we do have our players very approachable. Celeste, I've told you, 
that we go as you go. And baby, you went hard tonight. You went great. That we're doing things the right way is that it's about the entire approach. We want to run a big time Division I women's college basketball program, but never lose the personal aspect of it. And I think that will separate us from programs across the country. All right, ECU first on three. Real proud of you. Great job, guys. On three. One, two, three. ECU first. <laughs> The Pirate Baseball team will open the 2013 campaign this Friday against nationally ranked Virginia at Clark LeClaire Stadium. It's been a tradition over the years to honor one Pirate Baseball player with the number 23 jersey in honor of Keith LeClaire. Billy Godwin upheld that tradition by awarding Jay Cannon the coveted number 23. Jay basically represents everything that this award's about. Uh, you know, it, it represents a, a man who had great vision for our program. Uh, he was a great person in the community. Uh, Jay has that same type of work ethic and passion, uh, along with some of our other players. But, uh, you know, when, he, when the dust settled, so to speak, he, he was the best candidate. I mean, I've only known one side uh, of Jay Cannon who's nothing but been a, you know, and I, I said this, and I don't know, just the impact he has, I think he's the heart of our club. Uh, last year, if you remember, he got hurt at the end of the year, was hitting in the five hole for us, and we, and we scuffled a little bit down the stretch. And I, I, I remember saying right after he got hurt, you know, you see a guy hitting 310, but he just meant so much more than just that 310 batting average than what he brought to our team every day. Um, I, I think that's a, test, uh, a testament to what he's about and how he carries himself and what type of player he is. This right here is, is, is in terms of baseball, is the biggest thing that's ever happened to me. Um, you know, I was, I was talking to uh, to Coach beforehand, and I told him, I said, I said, Coach, you know, you don't understand what you've done for for me and my family. Um, to come from where I've come from and, and take the steps I've, I've taken is, like I said in the speech, you know, nothing short of God's grace. But you know, it's it's been hard work, and you know, this right here kind of solidifies, you know, where I came from and, and 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 where I'm at now. I didn't know anything about 23. Uh, didn't know what it meant. Haven't even. I've never heard of Coach LeClaire before in my life, and, and in the year and a half I've been here, that number has turned into something that, you know, I didn't even know what it was to one of the most important things in my, in my life. And, you know, like I said, I will cherish this for the rest of my life, and, you know, it, it's an extremely, extremely high honor. The ECU softball team opened the season and the Beth Keelan Randolph error Friday against Cleveland State in the Pirate Classic. The gals wrap up the tournament today at 1 p.m. against Towson. We'll be right back with more of the Jeff Lebo Show. Remember, Pirate fans, you can be a part of the Jeff Lebo Show. It's Ask Coach Lebo, powered by U.S. Cellular. Text the word COACH to 94597. You'll be asked to submit your question to Coach Lebo. He'll pick one to answer each week. Here now is Coach Lebo. This week's text question is from Jim in Greenville, wanting to know uh, what our favorite thing is about, uh, or my favorite thing is about going on the road to play. I think it's... Uh, us against the world mentality. Uh, we've uh, gone on the road in basketball is a very difficult thing. And you look back at East Carolina's road record uh, over our history, it's been very, very tough to go on the road to win. And I think really getting our team motivated, ready to play and prepared to try to win on the road is the best thing about, uh, uh, about going on the road and trying to beat not only the other team, but the other team's crowd. <laughs> Welcome back into the show, everyone. ECU head football coach Ruffin McNeil and his staff unveiled their 2013 recruiting class earlier this week, and it's a pretty good one. Among the signees are several Eastern North Carolina prospects, including a duo from the state 3A champion Havelock Rams. Defensive back A.J. Copeland and lineman Malcolm Ashley will call ECU home in the future, as will another Craven County standout, Newburn offensive lineman Christian Mattel. Trey Eason out of Northside Jacksonville will also be a Pirate. Eason is the nephew of former East Carolina baseball player and assistant coach Tommy Eason. A lot of these guys we evaluated and found a year ago, two years ago, uh, through evaluation, film, uh, uh, referrals, what have you. Uh, some guys we found in doing the recruiting trail this year, but uh, eight through camp, but uh, it's been I like this class. It's a great class, and every coach says that, but this class, I think, fits and, and it does fit what we were looking for and what we needed. Athletically, they're at a position where they, uh, Coach Connors can, can even start a little bit further along than normal. Five, four, three, 
I'm happy as a little boy today who just got a, a big Christmas present because uh, Coach McNeil uh, delivered me Brandon Smith, 18-year-old uh, new puppy that we have here. He's six foot six, 340 pounds. I don't know what he's going to look like in four years, uh, but we really like the way he looks now. We like the way he's been working. Today we're going to go through a little acceleration pattern, which is one of the first things we do in teaching our guys how to run properly. The objective is here, and you can see that we've got tape on the floor. We want to progressively take these six steps, and we're trying to take basically 10 yards in six steps. So we're trying to teach Brandon how to accelerate, keeping his feet close to the ground, eyes in the color, big arm swing, trying to attack the ground and put holes in the ground with the balls of his feet. Right now, he's taking about seven or eight steps, so we've got a little bit of work to do. And the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure we get him stronger so he can apply more force into the ground. Work up. All right, good. So right there on his sixth step, we call this minus eight. And we're basically going to calculate this in inches. We're going to divide it by times squared and multiply by two. That's what we use for our acceleration quotient. Right now, he's got a quotient number of 209, so we've got to improve on that. Good. Okay, so far we've been really happy with Brandon and also the other guys that come in uh, this January, which we'll, we'll probably see some of them real soon too uh, on the Camp Connor segment, but uh, been real happy with his work ethic, his personality. He's got a great personality. He's outgoing, he's aggressive, and he's very competitive. So we're really looking forward to this spring. Welcome back into the Jeff Lebo Show, everyone. And coach, you got another uh, dual week of Conference USA matchups, UAB and Southern Miss, two very tough teams. Well, tough teams. Uh, Jared Haas coming in uh, back home, uh, former assistant at the University of North Carolina, brings his UAB team back. They're playing better. Southern Miss, uh, a terrific team, top 30 in the RPI, looking at an at-large NCAA bid. But you got both of those games at home, and I tell you, the home crowds, we have talked about this before, the home crowds have been incredible. Have been great. Uh, right now, uh, we're number tie for second in conference attendance next to Memphis, so our crowds have been terrific. Our students have been great coming out. We'll need you this week. Well, hopefully they can uh, help push the Pirates over the top. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Billy. That's Jeff Lebo, head coach of the ECU Pirates. We'll join you next week right here on The Jeff Lebo Show. The Jeff Lebo Show has been presented by U.S. Cellular. Hello, better. This is an exclusive presentation of IMG, America's home for college sports.